This is Habs at Night. Montreal Canadiens take the New York Islanders to the shootout. And uh, I'll tell you what happened. Hey, everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talking Habs. We get your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge. And like I said, Montreal Canadiens got to the shootout. Didn't get much farther. The Montreal Canadiens and the New York Islanders are two teams uh, struggling to get their legs under them in the first couple of weeks of the season. Montreal was 2-3-0, and having some difficulties in their own zone and uh, running around, looking disorganized, unable to clear the zone for like long stretches, inconsistent offense. New York was 1-1-2 and and giving up too many goals along with scoring too few. Not a good combination. Two teams needing a win to build confidence. Montreal needing to tighten up on D, keeping the power play rolling. Score a few and uh, get back up Caden Primo a win after a poor performance in his only start uh, this season. The Isles needing to get their second win of the season and put some goals on the board. Also to get special teams untracked. Um, they came into the game with a power play at 10% and a PK at a bit over 70%. They also needed to get back up Semyon Varlamov back on track. With five of the last six games between them uh, ending in one goal decisions, uh, the game figured to be close, and it was. Two to one after one, two two after two, and uh, the game tied up at three after three. They went to overtime. Nothing solved in overtime, even though the Habs Kirby Doc took a high sticking penalty against Kyle Palmieri in the offensive zone. That's a no no. The Habs PK units were great again tonight, killing off five of six. So it didn't really hurt them, but you don't want to take in overtime and in the offensive zone. It then took nine rounds in the shootout before Noah Dobson's. Ninth round goal would win it 4-3 for the Islanders. So Montreal would take home the loser point. And, um, you know, overall, not so bad. So first period. Um, this period was equal parts boring and exciting. The boring part at the beginning, the exciting part in the last 10 minutes of the period. At 12.49, Lane Hudson would take a hooking call against Anthony Duclair. Hudson stick hook Duclair from behind and underneath. So basically hooking his balls and causing uh, Duclair to leave the game in pain and needed help off the ice. Bo Horvat would open the scoring on the power play with a snapshot from the high slot at 14.32. Two and a half minutes later, Kyle, uh, Kyle Palmieri made it 2-0. Uh, a stretch pass by um, Noah Dobson and Palmieri fires from the right circle and he ripped that one past Primo like a rocket of a shot. I don't know that you can uh, blame Primo on that one. With Montreal's defensive problems, this was looking like a long night ahead for Montreal and for Primo. The Isles' uh, Maxim Saplakov would take a high uh, sticking call against Oliver Kapanen with just nine seconds left in the first, and Cole Caulfield would rip one uh, from his office, but it would hit the leg of, um, of one of the defensemen, I don't know which one, and it would come right back to Cole right on his stick, and he snapped it past uh, Varlamov with just 2.5 seconds left in the in the period. And that cut the lead in half. And it was 2-1 to one after a 1. Caulfield's fifth of the season. In the second, the second started out uh, quick for Montreal. Logan Mayu tied it at uh, 2. One minute in as he unloaded an unstoppable laser beam wrist shot to the far side. Uh, I think he was... Um, in the circle or in the in the uh, high slot, I'm not sure where he was exactly. Oh, top of my head, um, and Varlamov didn't even see that. I he was lifting his glove as he was doing that. The puck was already behind him, so he didn't see that until it was already in. That was my U's, um first career goal. So uh, you know, congratulations, Logan. Good on him. Uh, the second uh, was a bit better overall in terms of uh, exciting hockey. But the Habs goal would be the only one of the period. Um, 
it was, you know, it was better, a little bit more exciting. The play was a little better, but not much in offense. Third period saw a return uh, to boring hockey. Three Habs penalties and Montreal uh, being outshot 14-3 to by uh, New York. It was looking like OT was going to happen, tied up at two, when Anders Lee would give the Isles the lead and probably the game with 436 to play. Lee tucked in a backhander on the rebound of uh, uh, Pajos. Um, he was in close. It was shot from in close, and it looked like that was all she wrote for Montreal. But it wasn't. With 2.10 to go in the uh, third, Slaff would find Cole with a pass down near the corner of the left side boards. Cole would skate back up to the circle, to the top of the circle, and just ripped a wrist shot. I mean, he ripped a, a beauty. Uh, past Var- Varlamov, and we're tied at three. And at that point, um, going to OT. <laughs> um, although, I mean, two minutes left, it could have it could have maybe not been. <coughs> Excuse me. OT would see three shots apiece, the Kirby Dock penalty, and uh, not much else. Nine shootout rounds later, and Montreal takes only the loser point and heads home. The three stars were... Uh, third star, Anders Lee, one goal. Second star was Cole Caulfield with two goals. And the first star was Noah Dobson with two assists. And he was he was really good all night. Noah Dobson's really a really good young defenseman. Uh, Habs number one line on the night. Cole Caulfield, two goals. Nick Suzuki, one assist. And uh, Yuri Slavkovsky, two assists. So five points on the night and a true number one line. Uh, they were one for one on the power play. They just got one opportunity, and they made it count. They had 30 hits to out hit uh, uh, the Isles just by two hits, but still. And 25 block shots in that one. I think the Isles had just eight, so they really uh, did a great job there. Habs need to continue to improve the defensive play ASAP. Uh, special teams are good. They're scoring decently. Caulfield is on fire. Monty is hot. And hopefully Primo's on track now, too, uh, because, um, yeah, I mean, he wasn't very good in the first game. But, you know, a lot of people were really coming down on him about that. And I said, you know, it's just one game for the kid. I'm not going to judge him on that first game. Um, You know, you got to see a bigger sample slice from him. And, uh, you know, second game, I kind of thought he started out a little bit – to me, a little bit shaky, and I was worried about it. The two goals happened. I was like, oh, it's going to be another bad night for Primo. And then he tightened up and bared down, and uh, he uh, he was good the rest of the night. Um, so good on Caden Primo for uh, getting his confidence back a bit. Um, the Habs don't have to rely strictly on Monty, and hopefully that continues because, uh, you know, Monty can't carry the full load. If the Habs are going to have a chance and make a run at the playoffs at all when Patrick Liney gets back, uh, they're going to need both goalies to be good all year and like they were last year, um, but with better results. So I, I, I hope for that. And uh, that's it. Next game is Tuesday. Uh, they're back at home. New York Rangers are in town. And uh, that's it. I hope to see you there at the Hangout. And uh, let's see, I look to see what I wrote here. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Stay safe out there till next time. Peace out. And uh, have a great day whenever you're watching this. Ciao, everybody.